Hello, friends, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Rays of Hope from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. Friends, let me invite you to pick up a Bible and turn with me over to Matthew 7. Today we'll look at verse 15, and then we'll turn over to Matthew 23, and we'll be looking at verses 27 and 28. Get a cup of coffee. Let's sit together. Have an encounter with God and his precious word on this beautiful day. Well, amen. What better way to start a brand new day than a good fresh cup of hot coffee? Spending some quality time with God and his precious word. Well, friend, in Matthew seven fifteen, the Bible says here, beware of false prophets, prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging or raving wolves. And then over in Matthew 23, verse 27 and verse number 28, the Bible says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are likened unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Today, friend, I want to bring to you a thought that is titled, Beware of the Wolf. Religion and politics. And boy, we're seeing that right now in our country. In 1960, 60 years ago, Dr. Billy Graham said America was founded by men who believed in prayer and that prayer can turn the tide of history, adding that while America is just as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah and deserves the judgment of God, this judgment can be lessened through prayer. Billy Graham said that 60 years ago. He also said 60 years ago that 95% of the people who came forward in his crusades aren't really saved by the grace of God and they're not really Christians. Friends, I would say a good portion of them, uh, Billy said, are in churches now teaching another gospel other than the one I expounded to them. My friend, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was far less about the Sodomites than it was about the desire to control the lives of others and force them into doing what they wanted them to do. It's a sad fact that we're living in a political world and it's no different today than it was when Jesus was here and the Roman government was in charge. Politics have reached into every aspect of our lives, even into our churches, where little cliques of Pharisee-type people try to run things their way. And their attitude is, it's either going to be my way or you can hit the highway. But friend, God has a different plan. Uh, just last week, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, a young man. And uh, he says, preacher, he said, uh, there's a lot of churches today having to close their doors because of politics that's in the church. Several weeks ago, uh, before I got so sick, I was sharing my faith with a young man, and he told me that he didn't go to church and he didn't intend to ever go to church because the church was full of wolves and uh, they were hypocrites and the list could go on and on of the negative things this young man had to say about the church. I knew in my own spirit that this young man had been hurt. He had been bitten by the wolf. Friends, listen to me. Beware of the wolf. 
The wolf in sheep's clothing represents himself or herself as standing for one thing, but they end up standing for another. In your daily walk, you need to beware of persons who gossip. Beware of persons who either want to know everything about everyone else's business or actually do know everything about everyone else's business. Beware of those persons whose spirits are not meek and mild, and beware of people who easily reject advice. Why? Because they know it all already in their own hearts and minds. Beware of people who rebel against leadership of any kind, and any people who come into a group over-eagerly to be the leadership. Now what we need to do is examine ourselves and see where we are in our walk. And we need to ask ourselves, my goodness, am I the wolf? And friend, if you are, I have one word for you today. Repent and turn to the Lord. Because Jesus dealt with this in a very solid way. He said, beware of the false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're raving wolves. He said, woe to the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, the religious leaders of that day. They were like whited sepulchers, beautiful on the outside, but full of dead men's bones on the inside, full of uncleanliness. My friend, I tell everyone, voting is a privilege, and voting we must do. But I think we need to be very careful what we vote for and who we vote for. And friends, if you're voting for people that just destroys the convictions that you have in the Lord, you might better reevaluate who you vote for. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Pray and seek God in how you need to vote. Be very careful because the wolves are running wild. Think about this. Pray about this. Now let us pray. Father, thank you for this most powerful devotion. Not a popular devotion, but a powerful devotion. No one likes to hear that they may possibly be a raving wolf. God, help us examine ourselves. We're so busy examining everybody else that we don't take the time to look at ourselves. Help us see ourselves through your eyes. And God, if we don't like what we see, help us find an altar of repentance. Because you tell us in your word that if we confess our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, help us do it so that we can make a difference in this beautiful world you've created. It may seem dark and dim, but one Christian with an illuminating light can make a difference in this world. Help us do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friend, not a popular devotion today, but a powerful devotion, and so true. Uh, friend, I do pray that uh, you'll make a difference in your world. Uh, let others see Christ in you. Your life could be the only Bible that some will ever read. So let others see him in all you say and in all that you do. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.